Another father who is St. Gregory the Theologian, he was the Archbishop of Nesianzus, uh, and we use the liturgy written by him, which is one of the best we know in the history of the Church, and that is why he's also known as St. Gregory the Theologian, more than Gregory of Nesianzus. He wrote here, one of the best sayings which argues against the Western theories of redemption and atonement. You may say, how can this be? He lived in the 4th century and these theories were written from the 11th century onwards. It is as if by the Spirit, as if he was thinking about people who say, to whom was the blood of Christ offered? Um, at the times before St. Gregory, uh, Oregon and Gregory of Nyssa, the brother of Bas uh, St. Basil in the 4th century, they used to say that blood was offered to the devil because we were held captive by the devil in eternal death. So Christ must have paid himself as a ransom to the devil. So St. Gregory is saying that is impossible, that's very bad to say so. And yet we can't even say that that blood was shed as a payment to the Father which was be said in later years as a ransom paid to the insulted justice and honor of God the Father, so he may set us free. And let's see how Gregory explains his point of view here. He says, To whom was that blood offered that was shed for us? And why was it shed? I mean the precious and glorious blood of God, the blood of the high priest and of the sacrifice. If to the devil that's outrageous, Impossible that the devil would ask for this as a price. But if the price was offered to the Father, I must ask first how and why. For it was not the Father who held us captive. Why then should the blood of his only begotten Son please the Father, who would not even receive Isaac when he was offered as a whole burnt offering? Is it not evident that the Father accepted the sacrifice not because he demanded it, or because he felt any need for it, as Western theologians said later, but on account of economy, because man must be sanctified by the humanity of God. Again, as St. Paul says, the blood of Jesus purifies our consciences and sanctifies us so that we are set free from the bondage of death or the fear of death. He's saying the same meaning as St. Athanasius. Then he continues and says, And God himself must deliver us by overcoming the tyrant through his own power and drawing us to himself by the mediation of his Son, who effects, who does this work for the honor of God, to whom he was obedient in everything. What remains to be said shall be covered in reverent silence. We needed an incarnate God put to death that we might live. Nothing can equal the miracle of my salvation. A few drops of blood recreate the whole world. And that was his comments on the Holy Pascha when he was giving his sermon. He also has a wonderful saying here that we use in the liturgy of St. Gregory in the Coptic Orthodox Church. And it spells the whole story of God created us out of love we destroyed ourselves by disobeying God's good will for ourselves, but God came to redeem us. And then he uses small, very sharp metaphors, one after the other. They are all trying to explain the work of Christ for our salvation, which is ineffable, indescribable in words. But we shall see what he says. Holy, holy, you, O Lord, and holy in everything. You have revealed to me the tree of life and warned me of the sting of death. The only tree that you told me not to eat of, but I ate of my own free will and abandoned your law by my own accord. I discarded your commandments by my own will as well. Therefore, I have chosen for myself the judgment of death. Very important. 
the judgment of death when God gave it to us. Some people say, oh, God decreed a sentence that man must die, so man must die, and that's the just judgment of God. It is not in that sense of the sadistic judge and a criminal at all. But the judgment of God that sin equals death, the wages of sin equals death, if you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. It is like the judgment of a doctor to a patient who comes badly broken from an accident or suffering from cancer and he tells him, listen, this is my diagnosis, this is my judgment, this is my opinion. This case, I'm sorry, it's terminal, medicine cannot help you. This is my judgment that you have destroyed yourself very badly. So God gave the judgment in that sense, a forewarning. If you drink poison, you shall die. Please don't drink poison. God is a physician. He said, please don't drink poison. Please don't go out in the cold and catch a pneumonia. I don't want you to die. Then we come and say, well, when God actually spoke to Adam and Eve, he was practically saying, if you don't listen to what I'm telling you, I'll kill you. Is that true? Of course not. He never said so. He said, don't hurt yourself. I don't want you to do this because you are so dear to me as my children. We continue. And then the church straight away after this, when we say, I have chosen the judgment of death to myself, we say, but you, God, or you, Lord, have transformed my self-inflicted punishment into salvation. You have changed my punishment, my self-inflicted punishment, into salvation. And the contrast here, as St. Gregory writes it, if God was the cause of eternal death and separation, why should he interfere to change this self-inflicted punishment or that punishment, if he was the maker of it, into salvation and life? It doesn't make sense. There is no physician who would give you the disease first and then he tries to give you the medicine. It doesn't make sense. A doctor of, of such qualifications or qualities would be stuck off the register of medical profession, isn't it? So we can't claim that God is the cause of death. And we've seen and we've read what is written in the Book of Wisdom. God did not create death but death entered the world by the envy of the devil and only those who belong to the devil will die. That is very clear and that's the teaching of the Bible. Let's continue. Then he starts to put these metaphors talking about the meaning of redemption and salvation. You have treated me with all the medicines that lead to life. You have sent me the prophets for me, the sick. You gave me the law as a helper. You administered my salvation when I disobeyed your law, not killed me when I disobeyed your law. You humbled yourself, taking the form of a servant and blessed my nature by its union with yours. Amazingly beautiful words. This is the same word of deification. And if we come to St. John Chrysostom in his commentary on Hebrews 9, he's using one very important metaphor to explain what Christ did. It is the metaphor of purification that the sacrifice does. And he says that what he offered us was a perfect purification, perfect remission, the cleansing by the blood which was spiritual. He used his word instead of the hyssop to sprinkle the blood. He enters the soul and cleans it and purifies it. The blood is mixed with its very substance making it vigorous and pure and leading it to the very unapproachable beauty. That's the substance of the soul. So the blood and the life of Christ comes in, mixes with us and gives us the beauty of God. His death purified even a precious purification and he continues using that metaphor. It's quite obvious that what we read for, from St. Athanasius, St. Gregory the Theologian, John Chrysostom and what we shall read is completely different from the medieval spirit of satisfying the divine justice by a penalty instead of a penalty, something that looks very sadistic, but it has its own role at that time. Now I think it has to become history put on the shelf.